that there is a genuine debate in Israel between those who are willing to be satisfied with only 80% of Palestine, namely are willing to give up the West Bank and the, the Gaza Strip, the mainstream of Zionism, from beginning until today, views Palestine as a whole as the necessary space for implementing a successful Zionist project. It's very important to understand that time, unfortunately, is not a factor here. Time does not change this geographical vision. On the contrary, I think it only strengthens it. What has changed the ability to present the world, very much like in the time of the Balfour Declaration, a kind of tormented Jewish society that is not sure where exactly should be the borders of Israel. But anyone who lived in Israel long enough, and every, every, anyone who was born in Israel, like myself, knows that this is one of the secrets we keep, so that we know that basically Zionism weights control over the whole of Palestine. The second area, that of demography, is also an area where the representation towards the outside world is very different from the real ambition. And the real ambition of Israelis at large, and definitely of all the political Zionist parties, from, creation, from the creation of the movement until today. And this is important to understand, although it's not always easy to detect, is to get rid of all the Palestinians who live in Palestine. Whether they live inside Israel, whether they live in the occupied territories, uh, the means of achieving that goal change. The ability to implement that program alters with time. But the ideological determination to achieve that formula, that's the Zionist formula. I, I, anybody who grows up in Israel knows that you, you get it into your blood from cradle to grave. This, the idea, the terrible idea, that life would be much better in Israel if the Arabs were not around. And you differ. You differ in your ability to determine how much are you willing to invest in getting that reality? It's true. For some weird people, it's just a vision. For other people, it's a political program. For other people, it's a problem which they don't know exactly how to implement. But the ideological infrastructure is very much the same. The last census we had in Israel was that 75% of the Jews in Israel uh, would not object to the transfer of the Palestinians who live inside Israel. You can imagine what would be the result if we talked about Palestinians who live in the occupied territories. And this is Palestinians who are citizens of Israel. So, demography and geography was very important. And by the time the British mandate ended, by the time the British mandate ended, on both fronts, the geographical front and the demographical front, the Zionist movement had failed. It had failed. By 1947, all it could do was purchase 7% of the land in Palestine. You cannot. If your idea is that you need the whole of the land, you cannot be happy with 7% of the land. Demographically, they also failed. And this is in the Holocaust, after the Holocaust, still the Jews in 1948 were one-third of the population. And most of this one-third were people who just came three years before. You could not have any successful Zionist project with such a demographic balance and with such uh, uh, a visible geographical presence on the land. This was the background for the decision of the Zionist leadership in February 1947 to use areas in which the Zionist movement did succeed in order to succeed in these two other areas. And the areas in which the Zionist movement did succeed was in amassing a very formidable military force, a very impressive financial uh, resources, financial resources, and in getting, by manipulating very much the, the guild complex uh, of Europe after the Holocaust, an international backing 
for the idea of a Jewish state at least on half of Palestine, which was articulated later in the United Nations Petition Resolution from November 1947. They used the international backup, the military power that they had, and the fact that they had built, and it was an impressive state within the mandatory state. The infrastructure for an independent state was already built by the Zionist organization uh, after 1947. They used it in order to uh, uh, confront the situation once the British had left Palestine with a very clear and systematic plan for the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. If you cannot get land by purchasing it and buying it, and if you cannot have a demographic majority or even exclusivity by immigration, you can get the same result in a very immediate way by expelling the people of Palestine. Uh, in a curious way, and uh, if you for a moment want to look at it objectively, which is almost impossible, it's quite impressive. This idea of you know, few Zionist leaders and military generals sitting in, as I describe in my book, in, in, uh, in a house in Tel Aviv and feel that they have the courage to decide that a million Palestinians could be driven out from their hundreds of villages and towns, that this would A, succeed, B, that the world would tolerate it, and C, that it would not at all disturb the moral creation of a Jewish state after so many years, as they would have put it, uh, of longing for having uh, independence and self-determination. They knew they could do it because they had also good intelligence. They knew how uh, fragmented was the Arab world at the time. They knew they didn't have to fear the Arab world's reaction too much. They had to prepare for certain Arab invasion, which did come. But they knew that the Arab uh, regimes were busy with other struggles, and they had a very good intelligence of how many troops would be sent by the Arab armies, what was their level of preparation, their equipment, and so on. They knew very well the lack of any military capability on the Palestinian side. And they understood perfectly well the international community position uh, towards the Palestine issue. Everything was clouded and dwarfed by the guilt complex of what happened in Europe during the Second World War. I don't think they knew they would be as successful as they, would, they were. In a matter of nine months, they expelled half of Palestine's population. Imagine the expulsion of half of any country's population in such a short time. Half of Palestine's population was driven out by the Jewish forces. Half of Palestine's villages, 531 in number, were totally destroyed and erased. And the forces that occupied them were ordered, as we have now very good access to documents in Israeli material archives, were ordered to detonate the houses, demolish them, and plant mines in the debris so the people would not be able to come back. Half of Palestine towns were erased from the form the earth. Palestinian bank accounts, furniture, books, any asset which was spiritual, cultural, or material was taken, looted. The, the amount of the pillage is something I have been too economical, I think, in my book. I think I should have described it even in stronger terms. Because you have to see in your eyes, even if you don't, all of us are unable to take a train back to 1948, the, uh, the, the picture of a whole city, think of Los Angeles, think of any city you know, nearby, where a military goes from house to house, and takes, empties the houses, takes empties